Hey everybody, welcome back to the latest installment of MSP Business School. Today our special guest is Jesse Hill from Tier 3. He is a uh, IT service provider up in Canada and he is also shh, a VCIO Toolbox customer. <laughs> but um, with that said, we, we're really excited to have you, Jesse, today to tell us a little bit about Tier 3, some of the uh, some of the thing, pains and gains you've had throughout your career and understand a little bit more about you and your team. So thank you. Yeah, yeah, welcome, sir. Yeah, yeah. yeah. As always, I've got Rob and Tim joining me today as well, uh, keeping hey, all everybody. of us honest. And uh, Tim, Tim's usually the one that keeps both me and Rob honest. So <laughs> just sit back and watch how that works, Jesse. But, uh, <laughs> you know, with that said, let's lead into tell us a little bit about yourself and your company and how you guys came to be. Sure. Um, so I'm actually second generation in this business. Uh, we've been around since 1990. My parents started it. And uh, I actually have to do an interview with my dad because it was our 30th anniversary and ask him what was he thinking in 1990 <laughs> starting a computer company. Um, because for those of you who don't know, not a lot of people had computers in 1990. Not a lot yeah, of businesses no. were making those investments. And uh, one of the cool artifacts that I have is actually a handwritten quote um, that he had, you know, provided to one of his first prospects. Oh, that's um, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. So for I mean, we've been doing it a long time, um, which means that we've gone through every, you know, trend and iteration, you know, in the technology space. You know, we've done we've done retail, we've done wireless, you know, point to point networking, we've done you know, cable installation, you know, offsite backups. And then of course, you know, in the last, you know, 15 years, really focusing on the managed services model. So, well, I'll say the reason he started in 1990. Most of the guys that I saw that started at that point in time did very well for themselves uh, <laughs> when boxes used to be at 30 to 40% margin. <laughs> oh, yeah, I, I remember him coming home with, uh, with four $1,000 bills um, you know, from one of his first sales that he'd made. And for any hockey fans, the guy that bought the computer uh, actually sold a bunch of Wayne Gretzky rookie cards to buy the buy the computer off my dad and, and yeah there was margin to be made back then now of you course you know like you a boss sell a Gretzky box. rookie cards you don't sell great no no you don't do that that's not <laughs> like something you do <laughs> that's that guy right now is sitting at home going i sold these wayne gretzky hockey cards <laughs> right it's a buy oh, computer God. my phone is more powerful now yeah <laughs> so jesse tell us a little bit about tier three in your under your tutelage yeah, so um, I, I got, I mean, I've worked in the business my whole life, um, but uh, really got involved, you know, 02, 03, um, when I started, uh, you know, probably more aggressively than I should have pushing my dad out. And, um, you know, really made that shift into, into managed services, you know, in 2006, 2008, wow. when it really wasn't at all. I mean, it's not what, it wasn't what it is today. Yeah. Um, there was no roadmap. Um, we just had this idea that, you know, getting recurring revenue was going to be, you know, the path forward. And uh, so we've gone through all the regular growing pains, um, you know, being a mixed shop of having, you know, retail time and materials and managed services, trying to do them all, you know, juggling all those balls, realizing that, you know, if you want to be good at one thing, you have to focus on it. And so, the tier three brand really came about back in 2015 when we we started evaluating the business and saying, you know, are we a are we a retail company that also does managed services, or are we a managed service provider who unfortunately has some retail? Yeah. And you know, when we shifted that mindset a little bit, we all of a sudden went, why are we doing this? Like, get rid of that. It's just a distraction. And so um, had really good. Uh, really good organic growth, um, you know, through referrals and just natural introductions and, and you know, the sales process, and then made a, a, a pretty good size acquisition back in 2018, you know, good size for us. It was a 50%, you know, jump in terms of, yeah. you know, company size and all the metrics. And uh, yeah, then of course, you know, got to deal with all that, which is a whole different set of uh, challenges. 
Yeah, I'd yeah, like I'd to like... talk about that uh, real quick. It's like, gosh, it just seems like sometimes they go so well, and sometimes I hear that they are just a bear. Yeah. What was the biggest challenge that you guys faced when you were doing that, uh, you know, merging two cultures, two completely different process systems? How'd that go? So I'd say that um, our our biggest pain was self-inflicted for sure. Um, and what it, what it all came down to uh, against the advice and better judgment that people had told me, you know, I looked at, I said, hey, we've got these two businesses that both existed on their own and are are good. So I'm sure that one of them has a better sales process and service and finance. And so let's run them kind of side by side and pick the best of each. And, you know, six months, we'll slam them together and we'll hit the ground <laughs> running. And realistically, what it did was it confused our clients. You know, why did they get sold if nothing was going to change? You know, the staff never, I mean, when we look back on it, we acquired them. There's a reason that we were the acquirer. And, you know, there, there was a, a, a structure and a maturity that, um, you know, we, we should have just enforced earlier um, because it's, it, it, it did, it caused, you know, some problems and some challenges. I mean, when we look back at it, it, it was still a fantastic investment, um, you know, from a strictly business um, perspective, it was good. We could have just done better if, you know, we understood those things, you know, going into it and, and we're just a little bit more aggressive, you know, but that's not really the Canadian way. <laughs> I tell you though, it is a, those transitions can be difficult because merging cultures is always tough. But then when you want to merge processes and really, you know, somebody being the alpha dog, but yet not stepping on people's toes because you need those people on the other side, um, it, it's an art form, man. It's, it's a tough yeah. dance to do. Yeah. yeah when I realized good. afterwards as well that there were there were things that I didn't even know I should have asked about. Um, you know, as an example, when, when I went with the other owner and we started, you know, meeting his clients, many of them, as we were driving there, he would say, oh, I went to, you know, kindergarten with this guy and this guy's my, you know, cousin's best friends, you know, every, they all had a personal connection. Whereas on our side of the business, um, you know, they were referrals from other clients. They were connections, you know, through that community, but very few, you know, actual, you know, personal relationships in it. So, so there's a different mix there that, um, you know, maybe we, we hadn't assessed or, you know, even thought to consider going into it. Yeah, there was that emotional side of the relationship that didn't exist with as many of your clients. And that's a tough one, right? Because they don't like to see the owner go either. Yeah, or the former owner go, so. It's tough. So, so tell us a little bit about, you know, one of the bigger things that maybe happened to you throughout the build out of the process that really shaped the company that you have today. Yeah. So, um, you know, we won't do any name dropping or anything, but back in 2014, I, I actually uh, ended up in uh, on the East coast there at a, at a conference, um, you know, really focusing on, you know, the numbers and, you know, understanding, you know, what our ratios should look like and that type of thing. And, and it was good, but um, while I was there, I got put onto a, a West Coast conference. And so I went to that one and uh, and it was all about sales process. And, you know, really we, we did sales, but we didn't understand sales. And we didn't understand that, you know, in order to get to the close at step six, you actually have to do steps one to five like you can't just go from one to six, right? right. I mean, sometimes you can, yep. but let's be honest, you know. Pretty rarely. And and, Pretty rarely. and and so when we came back and and we really assessed how we were doing things and and started, you know, saying, you know, Brian would walk into my office, hey Jesse, you know, I, I need pricing. I'm, you know, pitching, you know, services to this client, and I'd say, well, how come I haven't heard of this client in steps one, two, three, four, and five? Like, how are you at step six already? Well, no, no, they, I didn't need to do all that because, you know, they're ready to change and, you know, yep. they just need a price. And it's like, okay, no, no. Yeah, that's not, not the just, way it goes. That's, that's not, that's you're not in the sales process. So let's go back to step one. Yeah. Um, 
And, and yeah, when we started understanding that there's a process to it, that's when we saw our sales, you know, really take off and that our organic growth, you know, really carried through. Um, then of course, you know, lessons around packaging and, you know, wrapping in, you know, certain services and, you know, hardware and those types of things were, you know, a big step forward as well. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, it, it's amazing, you know, obviously Rob and, and Tim read sales process all day long in their roles over at OSR Manage, but uh, it's amazing that, you know, the, the mindset of many sales reps is all I need to ne- do is get to quote, right? And if I get to quote, I got a shot. But the problem is you've not identified where all the red flags on the way to quote is. First one being, why am I being asked for this quote and why is cost the only thing that matters? Obviously, you're holding other quotes, right? So, you know, there's a, a lot of interesting things that are behind the covers that we often overlook. And, and then we wonder, geez, why didn't we get that deal, right? Yeah. So I, I was skinny on the margin on that one. Why didn't we get it? really wasn't about margin right yeah so yeah so you know let's kind of play in the current state here jesse a little bit you know what are some of the things that you're looking to accomplish as we close out 2020 which was an incredibly interesting year for everybody out there and head into uh 2021 you know what what are the things that you'd love to see tier three get an opportunity to do well i mean we we want to shift back into growth mode um and I mean, as, as much as we talk about understanding sales as a process, um, with the changes we've made this last year, um, we need to rebuild or we need to build that team and, and that uh, that whole side of the organization out. Um, I think what we're seeing the, that um, the change to remote work, it's, I think people are still looking at it very much as an emergency measure. You know, thinking one day everybody's going to come back or we're going to go back to the way things were. And what I'm looking at more so is how do we lean into this? How do we make this an advantage? How do we, you know, use it as a way to attract, you know, the best people and, you know, to really leverage that into great relationships with our clients? Um, but I also, you know, look at, you know, how we run our business and we're, we're a small shop. So, um, you know, we don't have a lot of formal process around, you know, our HR, um, you know, engagement and, you know, that type of thing, because we used to just bump into people and, and chat with them and have a good conversation. Whereas now we actually have to have a structure and a schedule and a process to make sure that we haven't forgotten somebody. Um, because we haven't seen them or bumped into them, you know, in the last seven months. Right. So, so I think for us, you know, there's, there's a lot of internal work for us to do. And, you know, I, 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 was it Branson, you know, says take care of your employees and they'll take good care of your customers. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's kind of where my focus as a, as a leader is, is, you know, let's, let's make sure that our people still feel like they're part of a team. And at the same time, kick off, you know, so, you know, some more um, active sales activities. So what are some of the steps you've done to keep the team engaged over the course of the last, you know, five or six months or God, probably longer than that now, right? <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to pretend that I'm that I'm great at this. Uh, if you look at my personality profile, I'm naturally fairly introverted and enjoy being, you know, having quiet around me. <laughs> uh, we've done little things, you know, like, uh, so, well, first of all, Canadian Thanksgiving is in October. So um, as an example, at, uh, at Thanksgiving, I, uh, you know, went and picked up a whole bunch of um, locally made uh, pumpkin pies and, you know, wine, and literally drove around to every single one of my cl- uh, my employees' houses and showed up and surprised them with a pie and wine. Very um, nice. You know, earlier in the pandemic, we, you know, did little gift boxes with, you know, some coffee and some toilet paper and, you know, those kinds of things. Um, but other than that, it's it's really just making sure that we've got, you know, um, you know, regular meetings in the calendar that people are a part of that they can contribute to. And, uh, but I, yeah, it's tough. I, I feel like we're probably more task focused um, now than what we were when we were, you know, in office. Yeah. 
That makes sense. That makes sense. So and I so, got a question for you. Uh, so when you, you were talking about the acquisition and, and how turbulent it was there for a while, uh, you know, how long did it take you to smooth out uh, everything that you were doing and get everybody back into the culture that you believe in and, you know, kind of like get rid of the ripples that happened? How long did that take? Well, yeah, so we so we ran for six months thinking we'd we'd get the best of both and then we then we merged together and then uh, I would say within a year after that um, the other you know two thirds of the of the acquired employees uh, found other opportunities and uh, so we ended up hiring people in. So unfortunately um, we you know we retained you know twenty five percent of the team. Okay. Um, you know, that came from, you know, the acquired company. Mm -hmm. I'm told that's normal, um, but I've never, I, I didn't have anything personally to balance it against. So there was kind of a rebuilding that happened there. Um, whereas if we were do it, to do it again today, um, I think when, when we signed those new employment agreements with those people, we would put them right into our, into our on, onboarding process and, start hitting all, our policies and values and procedures right off day the bat. One, day one, and, yeah. Yeah. I mean, really, sure they probably appreciate that, you know, having some clarity and, and knowing that we care about them and want them to be here rather than just, you know, secretly watching them and seeing what, what what's working, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Curious as to, you know, you mentioned you retain 25% of this team. How about from a customer perspective with those personal relationships? Were you successful in retaining the majority of that? Yeah, yeah. So that side, yeah, we did. We did very well. Um, you know, of course, there was some churn. Um, mostly came, is. you know, they, they, were, they were very patient. They waited that six months. Um, unfortunately, they didn't see the change that they expected, right? And so, again, that's when I look back at it, had we you know, been in front of them at, with the same approach to, you know, the the staff and said, hey, look, this is who we are. This is how we do it. And I get that that's what, what your expectation is. We think we can do it better this way um, and just hit it right off the bat. We probably would have done even better. But when I look back at it again, you know, because, I mean, there's always conversations about, you know, was it the right thing to do? And and again, from a business perspective, financially, you know, it was a good investment. I'd do yeah. it again. Um, I would just try to do better. Yeah. Right. yeah. You know, it's it's all a process of learning too, right? Yeah. So yeah. I think we're heading into uh, to, towards the tail end. Tim, you want to take us home with the, the speed round? Yeah, so we just uh, we close out everyone uh, every one of our podcasts with just five quick questions. I've actually got a, a six for you, but uh, <laughs> first one is talk, text, or Teams. 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 Yep, that's the common. Uh, music, music, movies, or TV. Music. I feel like I'm thinking too what much. Age, yeah. <laughs> what, age, what age do you want to retire? What's that? What age do you want to retire? Oh, I don't think that'll ever happen. Um, I, I would like to have the option of retirement when I'm 50. Um, but I think realistically, I mean, I, I like to I like to keep busy. I, I can't yeah. see myself going and playing the same yeah. golf course every day. <laughs> yeah. It's one of our yeah. most common answers. Which it is. is it easy. just is. Very much yep. so. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Windows or Mac? Windows. Yeah. Okay. If you could do anything outside of tech, what would it be? Oof. Technology. Yeah. That's a first. Wow. There's an answer we've never gotten yeah, before. Wow. That is a new one. Well, so, so I'll, I'll give you the background on that. So not to be a psychologist, but okay. to to be able to leverage that that skill set and that knowledge base for you know driving engagement with with staff and and customers and and community um that was part of my my learning last year was you know just understanding yeah when when two people hear the same words they may not absorb yeah. them the same way at all yep. At all, and, even close. and so as a as a business leader you know i might say something like hey brian 
you know, I'm glad you came in to chat today. We've got some really exciting changes I wanted to, you know, go through with you. And, you know, to me, this is exciting. This and you're sitting here going, oh, crap. Like, am I going to lose my job? What's happening? Do I need to phone my wife? Yeah. Um, I, I just put a down payment on a house, with, right? And it's like, man, those are very different. <laughs> I don't know. So I'm going to come back to came in with the enthusiasm you just showed here on video for those that are listening podcast. I'm worried about my job at that moment, but I hear you. <laughs> yeah. You came well, in to let, we're making some changes. Let, let's, I that spot. <laughs> last one I had, flames or Oilers? Oilers? Yeah. I mean, I'm not going to pretend I'm a crazy hockey fan. My wife, if she ever watches this, which she probably won't, she knows way more about hockey and <laughs> than I do. But uh, yeah, I love a good game if they ever do it again. Uh, right. Yeah. Hey, they'll they have are. a Canadian division. They just got to figure out. Uh, they got to figure out everybody in the in the states. It's all F one in our house right now. Yeah. So. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Well, uh, Jesse, I really appreciate that nugget about, uh, you know, the merger and what you would have done differently. I think that's very important for, you know, other MSPs out there during this, you know, acquisition mode that people are going through and, and trying to find good ways to do the, you know, the acquisition. I, I really appreciate you uh, telling us not only the successes, but the failures there. That That's definitely going to help the community. Um, and I really appreciate you being on here today. Uh, for anyone that is looking to get in touch with uh, Jesse, uh, we are going to have his LinkedIn profile with the podcast. Uh, also, please remember that this is going to be on MSPBusinessSchool.com and anywhere you get your podcast to include YouTube. Mm -hmm. So please go to YouTube, check it out, subscribe, like, and give us a little love there so we can keep bringing you the content that we love to do. Thanks a lot. Gotta do it. Smash the bell. Smash the bell. <laughs> uh, Jesse, any uh, parting words of wisdom? No, just uh, thanks for the invite. Uh, it was great to spend some time with you guys and uh, appreciate the time. All right, man. Thank, Thank you, Jesse. Thanks for coming on.